Hello and welcome to this next lecture in the series on the subject of wavelets and multi-rate DSP. And in broader sense, the subject that deals with joint time frequency analysis. Today's lecture is titled as Towards Selecting Wavelets Through Vanishing Moments. So, in this particular lecture, we are going to understand the significance of vanishing moments. However, before we start our journey, let us spend few minutes in recalling what we did last time. Because after all, what we are going to do in this particular lecture, it in a way stands on the shoulder of what we did in the last couple of lectures. So, let us quickly revisit what we did in last couple of lectures. If you remember, in the last to last lecture, we mentioned and we in a way expressed our belief that if last 100 years were the 100 years of Fourier transform, then probably next 100 years are going to be the 100 years of wavelet transform. And this belief comes out of the fact that when it comes to dealing with non-stationary type of signals, Fourier transform has its own limitations. And that is where we will have to go beyond the purview of Fourier transform and start looking into the characteristics of wavelet transform. We started our journey with a basic fundamental principle that wavelet transform can decompose an underlying signal into two separate series. A single series to represent the most coarse version of the information and that leads us to scaling function and double series to represent the refined version or that gives us the details which are present in the underlying signal or function and that leads us to wavelet function. We furthered on this and then we realized that when it comes to wavelet transform, scaling, translation and dilation, they are indeed the hallmarks of wavelet transform and they together lead us to multi resolution analysis which is very popularly also known as MRA. The whole philosophy of multi resolution analysis is in a way based on the underlying framework and this framework comes out of the presence of nested subsets and these nested subsets they in a way give us the entire multi resolution framework. We also looked at the two band MRA filter bank and this structure is very typical for any input signal let us say P of n. If in the analysis side I have analysis low pass filter presented by H0 of z and analysis high pass filter given by G0 of z and they are followed by down samplers or disseminators. This is quite essential to keep total number of samples same. For example, if I am starting off with 4 samples, then I should be able to produce 2 samples here and 2 samples here. However, the moment you introduce decimeter or down sampler, the whole structure becomes something that can be called as a multi rate structure. The sampling rate is not uniform and that is why for all the unirate DSP structures, we aim at designing filters, digital filters and for all multi rate structures like the one shown in this particular diagram, we always aim at designing filter banks. So, we have low pass filters and high pass filters, they are duels of each other and they together formulate filter bank and that is the whole point when it comes to design of a multi rate structure. 
we also typically saw that if we have a given input signal p of n that belongs to v1 then by virtue of having these disseminators we end up with projections of the same signal let's say p0 that belongs to v0 because we are talking about low pass filter the scaling function and correspondingly q0 in w0 because we are talking about the high pass filter which comes out of the wavelet function and then if we see the ladder structure once again then we realized that I can draw this ladder structure like this v of minus 3 which is contained in v of minus 2 and this will continue and if we are starting in v of 0 not necessarily we have to start in v of 0 this is just one example if we start in v of 0 then by virtue of having a two band filter bank structure we in a way move down the ladder and typically it is easier to move down the ladder because if I have the information and if that information is projected in a subspace v of 0 then what I can do is I can throw away the information which is w0 and what I will be left with is v of minus 1. Similarly from v of minus 1 I can throw away the information which is w of minus 1 and I can have the information projections in v of minus 2. So, when it comes to moving down the ladder, you have the piece of information and you just keep on losing the details and you get the approximations in the lower scales. However, we also realized that for many of the applications, it is desired, it is required to actually move up the ladder. And if I really want to move up the ladder, for example, if I have to move from v of 0 to v of 1, then I have to have this information with me. I can add these two pieces and only then I can move to v of 1. From v of 1, if I have to move to v of 2, then I have to have the corresponding projections in w of 1 and these two together can be added to produce the corresponding projections in v of 2. So, how to go about doing this and last lecture we in a way put down the framework for doing the same and what we saw in the last lecture was this. If I have some signal let us say f z of x that belongs to v of z and for the scale of 1 upon 2 to the power z I can span the whole space, whole linear space using this kind of basis function where 2 to the power z by 2 is the normalizing factor and by adding this factor we not only make sure that my basis functions are orthogonal but I normalize my orthogonal basis function and such kind of basis functions are indeed orthonormal basis functions. And then phi of 2 to the power z x minus k where k is the translation parameter. So, this gives me normalization, this parameter over here will give me scaling and k is obviously meant for translation. And by using this assembly then I can represent f z of x like this where all the alpha z k values are the approximated values which can be calculated using this formula. We went ahead and we also looked at the framework for finding out projections in w z subspaces. Let us say these are named as functions g z of x just for the sake of nomenclature we are talking about the same function which belongs to 
a subspace wz and with the scale of 1 upon 2 to the power z again I can span these linear subspaces using this kind of orthonormal basis function 2 to the power z by 2 psi which is my wavelet function 2 to the power z x minus k where k is again the translation parameter. And I can write down g z of x like this where beta of z k are indeed the details present in the underlying signal and beta z of k can be calculated like this. And then we wanted to really ensure that this assembly helps us move up the ladder. If I have projections in v0 and w0 and if I orthogonally add these projections then I end up with projections in v of 1. So, from v of 0 my journey takes me to v of 1. So, I have start moving up the ladder and we use this orthogonal summation formula for doing the same. If you remember last time we solved one problem, the problem where we took f of x as the sample function where x f of x is equal to x for all the values of x between 0 and 3 and it is a simple straight line. And then we started finding out the projections of this f of x first of all in v of 0. We know the formula and it all boils down to finding out the alpha values. So, alpha 0 0 we plugged in everything and we realized that alpha 0 0 was half. We went ahead and we also calculated alpha 0 1 and then we realized that alpha 0 1 value came out to be 3 by 2 and correspondingly alpha 0 2 value came out to be 5 by 2. And as the name suggests these are indeed the approximations which are shown in green. So, all these green values are the approximated values of the original signal its corresponding projections in v of 0 using Haar scaling function. We then went ahead and did the similar exercise for finding out the projections in w 0 and then we realized that g 0 of x which belongs to w 0 is indeed summation over the details and the corresponding translated version of the basis function. So, the whole task was then to find out the beta values and then we did that we initially calculated beta 0 0. We went ahead and calculated beta 0 1 and also beta 0 2 and then we realized that all beta values were indeed minus 1 by 4 and if I have these beta values with me I can correspondingly find out g 0 of x. Then came the important task of moving from v 0 to v 1. We can go on adding up the alpha 0 and beta 0 k values to find out alpha 1 k values. We can also calculate alpha 1 k values using the normal formula and in the end we are able to tally all the different values of alpha 1 k. We solved the problem of alpha 1 0 and we realized that we do not really have to worry about this, this particular factor of square root of 2 because when it comes to plugging in the value of alpha 1 0 in the formula for f 1 of x it will be taken care of and so we should focus only on 1 by 4. And then we calculated all the alpha values by adding up alpha 0 k and beta 0 k values. So, we added up all the alpha 0 k and beta 0 k values. For example, in order to calculate alpha 1 0, we added up the first half of alpha 0 0 and the first half of beta 0 0 and that is how we are able to calculate the value of alpha 1 0 and then we continued for the rest of the values and that is how we are able to generate all these values of alpha 1 k. 
we plotted everything and then finally all the red points all the red approximated values are indeed alpha 1 k values and they will help us find out the projections of f of x in v of 1. And we confirmed that indeed we are able to move from v 0 to v of 1. And visually graphically we can now verify that v of 1 gives us better approximation of the original signal when we compare it with the corresponding approximations given by v of 0. So, we are indeed able to add these details in w 0 and then moved on to v of 1 definitely a better approximation of the underlying signal. There is a reason as to why we revisited this entire example that we solved in the last lecture. What we are going to do in today's class is in a way based on this particular example that we solved. We are going to pose few interesting questions based on this particular example and then correspondingly try and solve these two questions and that will formulate the reminder of today's lecture. But before that, let us quickly go through a MATLAB simulation of the same problem that we just solved. This is a very simple MATLAB program. CLC is meant for clearing up the command prompt, clear all is going to clear all the variables and close all is going to close everything. Now, let us define our x axis and this could be our time axis for example and since my signal f of x exists between 0 and 3, x of 0 is 0 and x 1 is 3. The level is selected to be 9 and this level gives us the resolution step while moving from x 0 to x 1 and that will be clear when we see the next line written over here. So, we have written that x is equal to x of 0. So, it begins with x of 0 and then it increments in a step size and this step size is 1 upon 2 to the power level. So, the step size that we have selected is dependent on the value of level variable that we select. In this step size it will start from x 0 and with this step size it will go all the way till x 1 which is 3 minus one of the steps that is 1 upon 2 to the power level. And the underlying function is f of x is equal to x and that is why we have written f is equal to x and then we have saved this variable f in a mat file which is test underscore f dot mat. So, let me run this program and after running this program we can very clearly see the mat file that is test underscore f dot mat that has been generated. Now, let us invoke the wavelet toolbox and let us look at the one dimensional analysis. Now, for this analysis let us provide the signal that we have generated as the input that is test underscore f dot mat. So, this is how our signal actually looks and let us try and analyze this signal using a simple HAR wavelet and let us do the analysis till the third level. So, this is how the analysis actually looks and now let me be interested in the different modes that can help us understand what exactly goes into the system. So, these are the separate modes of doing the analysis and as you can absolutely clearly see as far as the approximation in A 5 is concerned, 
it is quite crude. And as we start moving towards A1, it gets better and better and better. And we also know the reason. We add A5 into D5 to generate A4, for example. And this would continue. Let me superimpose these modes to really understand it better. And instead of using 5, let me use 10 scales and then try and superimpose everything on top of one another. And now, this particular plot will really help us understand what kind of things we are actually doing. And let us start one step at a time. So, instead of selecting all, let me start with only the most crude level approximation. And now, let us start adding up the details by virtue of which will start moving up the ladder. So, you can clearly see that approximation is better now. And as you continue doing this, you will get a better and better and better approximation. And then right at the end, you go tantalizingly close to your real signal. So, if we just place the last value that we have obtained, then this is indeed very, very close in, in terms of representation to the underlying function or the underlying signal. Excellent. So, as can be seen from the slides, this particular framework indeed gave us the power to move either down the ladder or up the ladder. And we can clearly see that the zoom in and the zoom out properties of the wavelet transform are indeed met. I can really zoom in and zoom out. And in order to be able to achieve this, I have not only my scaling parameter, but also the translation parameter. The best part is, this makes the entire framework extremely scalable. Scalability stems out of, obviously, the whole framework being multi-resolution framework. And we make use of scalable systems every now and then. For example, all the images which are stored on internet, they are in a way stored in a pyramidal structure. When we google search for a particular type of image, what gets retrieved back are only the thumbnails, that is the uppermost slice of the pyramid. And when you select or click on that particular thumbnail, then probably one of the slice from the underlying framework of the entire pyramid will get selected depending upon the resolution of the kind of hardware that you are using. Same holds true even for video analysis. Almost all the video codecs that we make use of these days, they demand scalability. And that's where wavelets have started replacing many of the conventional basis structures. For example, in ZPEG, discrete cosine transform used to get used. In ZPEG 2000, we all know we make use of 5 by 3 by orthogonal tap, which is a wavelet basis function. And so, scalability is indeed the need of the time. Let us go back to slides. And we have seen the framework, we have studied the framework. And this framework in a way leads us to two very important questions. Question number one, how do we go about selecting the mother wavelet and the scale of analysis? So, both the questions are very important, which are the sub questions of the first question. Which mother wavelet, whether I should use Har mother wavelet or Dobash or Shannon or Mayers, 
there is there is tremendous amount of variety and what scale of analysis I should select should I stop after two scales or three scales or four scales what is the stopping criteria these are two important questions and correspondingly there comes the second important question as well and the second question is what is the procedure to calculate scaling and wavelet coefficients we have been using the coefficients which are readily available to us given by Dr. Haar given by Dr. Dobash can we think of finding out our own wavelet can we think of finding out our own coefficients for doing the analysis it's a tall order it's a very difficult proposition altogether however at least we can get into the head of the scientists who in a way discovered these different mother wavelets and understand the procedure and who knows that will lead us to finding out something of our own however we will do that in the next lecture in the reminder of this particular lecture we will try and answer the first question and if we refer to the slides again the first question is of great significance the first question in a way asks us what is the significance of selecting the mother wavelet if I have an underlying application and I know what kind of data or information I am going to deal with then how I can appropriately select the mother wavelet in order to be able to carry out the analysis effectively and efficiently that's the question that we'll try and answer in the reminder of this lecture and we are going to invoke one important property of wavelets which is called as vanishing moments we are slowly and gradually moved towards vanishing moments through correlation we are very familiar with correlation and convolution so through correlation we will slowly and gradually move towards moments we will define moments we will understand the concept of moments getting vanished and we will also try and understand why this is of great importance great significance in order to be able to bring out the correlation parameters in wavelet domain let's first of all convince ourselves that in a way that's precisely what we were doing as far as the Fourier domain is concerned in Fourier domain we made use of this correlation to a large extent and this particular property of correlation is of great importance what is shown in this particular slide these are the basis functions so typically the real part of the basis and the imaginary part of the basis we know the basis function of Fourier transform is e to the power z omega and this is the real part which is the cosine part and this is the imaginary part which is the sine part and then if we pose this particular question that how indeed Fourier transform works then one way of looking at Fourier transform is understanding the correlation between the underlying function and the basis function and this can be done using simple dot product philosophy so what we will do is we will go back to one sample MATLAB program so in this particular MATLAB program as can be seen on the screen we have generated a function and we want to analyze this particular function let's say y and this function is a good looking stationary function that means all the frequencies they are present all throughout this function and as can be seen in fact there are two frequencies which are present in this particular function sine of 3 and cos of 8 
x is a variable again and you can add a 2 pi in order to make this normalized. So, this function has two frequencies sin of 3 and cos of 8 and let us find out the dot product. Well, the concept of dot product is very useful particularly for engineers while doing the analysis of signals because in a way dot product means instantaneous product. We can look at all the instances on x axis which is time axis and carry out the multiplication as simple as that. So, keeping that in mind let us say to analyze this particular underlying signal I invoke this particular basis in Fourier transform. Now, we have understood that Fourier basis is e to the power z which can be disintegrated into real and imaginary parts which is cosine and sine part and let us say I am invoking this underlying signal with the basis of cos of 6x and if I do so then let us see what kind of response do we get. So, this is my underlying function or a signal which is stationary signal and it contains two frequencies. This is my basis function with which I am doing my analysis. So, this is cos of 6 that is the basis I have used and you can clearly see since cos of 6 is not present in the original signal there is poor correlation between the signal to be analyzed which is shown in red and the basis function which is shown in blue and as a result of that if I do if I take the dot product between these two then this is what I get and if I integrate this dot product which is shown in green then you can clearly realize that there are as much as positive parts as much as there are negative parts and they would cancel out each other and as a result of that I will not get any peak for a frequency of 6 and it makes sense because I do not have that frequency in my original signal. So, in my original signal I have only two frequencies sin of 3 and cos of 8. So, it makes sense when these parts they would in a way cancel out each other and that essentially indicates that the underlying signal and basis they are not correlated. Now, instead of using the basis which is not present in the original signal using a frequency which is not present in the original signal, let us invoke the underlying signal with a frequency which is present for example, sin of 3. This frequency is indeed present in the signal. So, let us try and invoke with sin of 3 and if I if I run this again then this is the original signal that we are trying to analyze and this is now sin of 3 and you can clearly observe a good amount of correlation. This is positive cycle and there is lot of activity in positive area very little activity in the negative area. This is the negative cycle and again very little activity in the positive area for the underlying signal. So, the in general correlation is much much better and that is because this frequency is actually present in the original signal and now if you find out the dot product then you will realize that there are very less negative parts and the area under the positive part is much much more. So, when I integrate this dot product I will definitely get some positive value and that will be the peak at 3 at a frequency of 3 when I am trying to plot the frequency response or the Fourier response of this underlying signal. So, that is precisely why we end up with a peak at a frequency of 3. The dot product essentially tells us 
that the basis of sin 3 is highly correlated with the underlying signal. This is indeed true for all different varieties of basis. Let us go back to the slides and let us run through few of the examples quickly. As can be seen in a slide, this is the same signal sin of 3 and cos of 8 when invoked with cos of 1 obviously poor correlation and so the dot product would result into the parts that would in a way cancel out each other. Same signal when invoked with sin of 1 again this frequency is not present in the original signal. So, poor correlation and the dot product parts would cancel out each other. So, no peak will be generated at a frequency of 1. Now, if I invoke this with cos of 3, you can clearly see that cos of 3 is not present in the original signal. So, once again the dot product will have the parts that would cancel out each other. However, as we have seen in the MATLAB demonstration, if we invoke this with sin of 3, which is now present in the underlying signal, then definitely dot product will generate a peak at the frequency of 3. The same holds true for cos of 8, because cos of 8 is present in the original signal. And as a result of that, you can clearly sense that correlation parameter is very high, correlation index is very high and if you take the dot product, then that is going to give you a peak at a frequency of 8. So, this idea of correlation we have been using with Fourier transform for quite some time. Now, this is a good time to invoke the same property of correlation in the context of wavelets. So, let us do that. We know the formula for convolution very well. So, we will start with the convolution formula move towards correlation formula and then see what is the significance of movements when it comes to deciding the basis wavelet function for analyzing a particular type of underlying signal. So, let us write down the formula for convolution first, because we are quite familiar with convolution. And if we want to find out the convolution between f 1 of x convolved with f 2 of x, then that is going to be equal to integration from minus infinity to plus infinity f 1 of x minus t into f 2 of x into d x. Now, if we get rid of this flipping operation, then the convolution will become correlation. And so, I can very well write down the correlation formula like this. I would say correlation between two functions say f 1 and f 2 will be f 1 of x. Well, this stands for correlation, this is not a very familiar mathematical notation. So, please pardon me for abuse of mathematical notation, but just to understand. So, this is correlation between f 1 of x and f 2 of x and that is equal to integration from minus infinity to plus infinity. I would say f 1 of t minus x now into f 2 of x into oh we used d x in the last formula this should be d t just a correction. So, this is the correlation formula. Now, see 
Since we are often interested in detecting sensitive activities in the signal such as spike or jump discontinuity in its higher order derivatives, we would like to know about what kind of wavelets will be able to see such activities. And indeed, it turns out that we can find wavelets that can detect or see linear or quadratic or higher polynomial structures. And that brings us to the subject on maximum order of vanishing moments. So, let us define what do we mean by moments first and then we will understand the significance of moments when it comes to selecting a particular type of mother wavelet. So, moments. The moment of order m say m of m of function f of x on interval a comma b can be given as m m to be equal to integration from a to b x to the power m f of x into dx. So, this is how I can go about defining the moments and this is of order m. So, I can find out 0th moment by plugging in m small m is equal to 0. Correspondingly, I can go about finding out first moment and second moment and third moment and so on. Now, when these moments of higher order they vanish, they in a way tell us something very very special about the underlying wavelet. So, what special information these moments convey we are going to understand in few minutes. But before that to understand whether the moments actually vanish or not, let us very quickly solve a simple problem with the Haar wavelet once again to really convince ourselves that the moments indeed vanish out. So, let us take a case of Haar which is also the first member in the Dobashi's family. So, Haar which is equal to Dob 1 psi of x. So, let us try and solve for this particular mother wavelet. And let us say I want to find out what happens to the 0th moment and we know the formula and I can plug in the values from 0 to 1 that is because this psi of x exists only between 0 and 1. We typically know how this psi of x looks. So, this is my psi of x which exists only between 0 and 1 and that is where integration limits are from 0 to 1 and then x to the power 0 psi of x into dx. And now, we will have to split this integration into two parts from 0 to half we have x to the power 0 is going to go to 1. So, 1 into from 0 to half this value this function takes a value of plus 1. So, I can plug in 1 of dx minus because it is going to take a value of minus 1 between half and 1 and then 1 into dx. So, that will result into x 0 to half minus x from half to 1 and so we are talking about a situation where we have half minus half and this goes to 0. And so, I can very well say that the 0th moment of Haar mother wavelet 
vanishes. Whether this holds true for the first moment as far as her mother wavelet is concerned. Let us try and find out. Let us do the same exercise for her psi of x, but let us try and find out the first moment. So, m of 1 is going to be equal to between 0 and 1 and then now I have x to the power 1 psi of x into dx and that leads us to from 0 to half x into dx minus half to 1 x into dx and typically we know that this is x square by 2 in 0 and half minus x square by 2 between 0 and half. And if you solve this, this is going to go to minus 1 by 4, which is not equal to 0. And so, we can very well conclude that the first moment of her mother wavelet does not vanish. Or in other words, as far as the her mother wavelet is concerned, it has only one moment which vanishes, which is the zeroth moment. Interesting. Now, that will take us to one very interesting question and that is vanishing higher moments and by higher we mean higher order moments of wavelet. How this is a measure of quality? So, this is one interesting question that we are going to in a way pose. And there are two ways in which we can answer this question. And these two ways are, I can, I can probably say that as far as my vanishing moments are concerned, these vanishing moments they definitely number 1 gives me savings in computations. And number 2, they are definitely useful in detecting higher derivatives. And this second property is of great importance, it is of great significance. Now, why this is important? Well, we are going to revisit the problem that we solved last time. So, we will refer to the slides once again. We solved this particular problem last time, if you remember. And this is a very typical application which is required in many real life situations where we are trying to in a way find out the hidden discontinuity, the hidden jump in the underlying signal. And we took this particular function as an example where g of t is equal to t between 0 and half and t minus 1 between half and 1 and there was this clear jump at t is equal to 0.5. We did the integration of the original signal g of t. By virtue of doing this integration, we are able to generate signal h of t. And still in h of t, we realize that there is this cusp jump at time t is equal to 0.5. So, we integrated this h of t again 
in order to finally generate f of t. And now, if we plot this f of t, then this function would definitely appear very, very smooth to our eye. And if you remember, last time we did this small exercise in MATLAB. So, we are able to generate these different functions. And these different functions, they look like this. So, in the original function, the discontinuity is obvious. In the integrated version, there is a cusp discontinuity. And then, by virtue of integrating twice, we get a very smooth, good looking function. And we also saved this function in a test underscore sig underscore f dot mat. And if you remember, we did this small exercise last time that we invoked the windows menu of Wavelet toolbox given by MathWorks. And we tried to interpret this particular function. So, I am loading this particular signal that we have generated, which is test underscore sig. And we know that in this particular signal, exactly midway through, there is a discontinuity, which is hidden, because we have done double integration of the original signal. So, it is not apparent to the eye. It looks like it is a smooth signal, but we know that there is a hidden discontinuity over here. And now, if we try and do the analysis, let us say using HAR and I am selecting the maximum possible scale. I am going all the way till level number 9 and if I do the analysis and if I see the detail after scale 1, then oh, Haar wavelet analysis misses out this discontinuity. So, I cannot really detect this discontinuity using Haar. By the way, HAR is also known as Dobash 1. So, HAR is the first member in the Dobash family. So, Dobash 1, if I do the analysis, then it is the same thing. And we clearly miss out this discontinuity. As against that, if we invoke Dobash 2, and now if we try and analyze, then you can clearly see that I can now very clearly find out the discontinuity over here. I can zoom on to this part to really understand it better and you can clearly see at 256 because we are doing a 2, 512 level analysis. So, exactly midway is 256 and at 256 this pattern goes abrupt and it tells us that there is a discontinuity at 256. So, Har was not able to detect this, but Dobash 2 was definitely able to detect this. And if you allow me to select Dobash 3, the discontinuity will be more apparent. So, it tells us that oh, there is indeed this discontinuity present at this point in the original signal. Correspondingly, we can go on selecting Dobash 4 and the discontinuity will become more and more apparent. So, what we are trying to say is which mother function should be selected is one very interesting question and it depends on what kind of data we are trying to analyze. Continuity or the hidden jump was detected only using those wavelet functions which are above Dobash 2 and there is a strong connection between number of vanishing moments associated with these different mother wavelets and their capability in doing the underlying task. We will stop here as far as this lecture is concerned and in the next lecture, we will continue harping on the same lines. We will realize that vanishing moments are of great importance and only certain type and certain kind of wavelet mother wavelets, they are capable of doing certain type of jobs, certain type of tasks. Through the correlation, through the vanishing moments, we will try and make sense 
of what we covered in this particular lecture that we will conclude in the next lecture. Thank you.